Okay! <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Alistair Drakovic, and welcome to my Phoenix Wright Let's Play. We are now... Oh, right. In cross-examining... Uh... This person. This... Complete disaster. Okay. It was like... Nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know. And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl. It was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. That girl, she caught up to her and... And she hit her. What? Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little itsy witsy. Uh, did she? Well, your honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see any need to trouble the witness, Sandy. What? Wait, your honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm. Did you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Fey's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross examine the witness? Yes, I am doing it. Yeah, I'll gladly proceed with a cross-examination. Only because I have a feeling Miss Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. So yeah, uh, holy sh... Hmm. I, I'm speechless at how, just how much of a right, um, hmm. I don't think I'm allowed to use the words that I have for describing Edgeworth right now in court. Like, I know he gets rather popular and gets some character development, but gosh dang, pre-character worth character development Edgeworth? Complete and total trash. Uh, 9 o'clock at night, huh? Let's press. Why did you do that? Huh? Why? Like, why what? Why did you look out the window? Were you expecting to see something? Oh, well, um, gee. What, that's it? You can't get out of this question that easily. I sort of, you know. I had a feeling. Well, I have a feeling she's trying to avoid the question. Maybe I should press a little harder on this one? Go for it. Let's see how far I can run with this. Surely you must have had a reason to look out your window at that time of night. I, I, ooh. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness. A badgering? You insist on kneeling here with these trivial questions. I really don't think it should be allowed. Uh. Yeah, poor girl, what about poor Mr. Phoenix? Wow! He looked out the window. What did you see next? Oh, right, I was still damaged from the fact that I uh, messed up earlier. Okay, yeah, ow! I think there was something to that, I just messed up on the pressing. Autopsy report might need to be presented here, but... We'll check back in a bit. For now. The woman with long hair. That was Mia Fey? Uh, mm hmm Slender, sort of, well... People might say pretty, if that's your thing. Your... thing. And the person... And the person attacking her. 
The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. How do you know she was the defendant? Huh? Well, you know, she, she had a girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? There was only one person at the scene of the crime with a short, girlish figure. The testimony is bulletproof, your honor. I question the testimony. Hold on a minute! That testimony stinks! What? what? This may. I'm willing to bet that. You're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? Yeah! I, okay, so, with this pressing, I wonder if there's a way, if there's a way we can, you know, call into question the, um, distance and whatnot. Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. Oh... No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her! I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. Testimony is bogus. But, but, still, we don't know if she was dressed like, where the night of the murderer. She was, your honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Rawr! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw! I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing from your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. We. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Okay. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Well, that's an interesting, um, tidbit. I wonder if that's... Then... The girl in the hippie clothes kit ran right after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw what I did. That that clock, um the kind of statuey clock, I think, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Tee hee. Oh, I already know where that um you know. I only wish you had been detailed that detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Gladly. Wow, this one you could drive a truck through. Yeah. The woman dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. You know what? I could put a press just to hear this. To hear more on this. Is that right? As in your right? As you looked from the hotel. Um, which hand do I hold my knife in again? Right. It was my right hand, right? Satisfied, Mr. Wright. Please continue. Lots of rights there. Carl and Little Pinocchio after weapon. Uh huh. Statuey clock. Okay. Just gonna go ahead and present the thinker because nobody should know that it's a clock. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty lawyer? You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? 
<laughs> the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murders with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection substantiated. You may continue to question the witness. Whew, that was close. If you stop me there, the trial would be over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? That, that's... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Fango. No, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. <laughs> the law offices of Fango, where the murder took place, is very mu is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... Shh, it couldn't have rung. It was, after all, hollowed out. Your Honor, members of the court, it is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It is empty. It was hollowed out for evidence for another trial altogether. Witnesses in the court? That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly? Just take a look, right now. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It's as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. <laughs> fat? Well, Miss May? Oh, no. Edgeworth. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty, somehow. He knew. I'm afraid you've gotten, forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty, as you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Gumshoe's hide is, is toast here. Oh, impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork removed is... Now we bust out the cell phone. Take a look at this! Hmm, that's a very cute cell phone! Woohoo! You have a girly phone! Wait, wait, wait! This isn't my phone! Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording... A recording of a conversation that she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! The defendant's cell phone? Th this wasn't brought to my attention! <laughs> wow, he looks completely wigged out of his mind. That's hilarious how easily his composure cracks. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? <laughs> the, good, the good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon! <laughs> I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. 
Let's hear the conversation. Beep. So, you just want me to hold on to the thing care for you, then? If you could... Uh, I should probably just tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? Well, it's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clock word out, sorry. September 5th, 9.27 a.m. Beep. <laughs> oh, I'm looking forward to what happens next. Your Honor! I think this makes it clear the clockwork was already gone by the time this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel. <laughs> well, Miss May, would she care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, uh, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Wink. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes, I do. My God. The witness claims she had seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will produce... Prove the witness had not seen the clock before. It was made by Larry Butts. Please tell me that presenting it will... It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. It impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. Hmm. Oh? Excuse is not on sale today. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, she's pissed. Listen to you, porcupine head. That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! <laughs> whoa, 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 let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm! Silly me! Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. Tee-hee! Wink! This is scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Oh, that face! That face is just borderline JoJo right there. <laughs> hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. This April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... Hmm. She had had to have heard about it. The witness had never even held a clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There's no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it, then. Show me the evidence proving the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. Aha! The wiretap finally comes into play. Thank goodness. Have a look at this. <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Fay's phone, were you not? Ooh, Ooh there's an objection. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? 
Absolutely! Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not! Oh yeah? I think I can! It's simple! What? Here's my proof! The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... The freaking cell phone conversation! I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that! Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Yeah, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it tells you the time. Miss April May, you used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? Hey, hey. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer! Oh... Yeah, that's not pretty. It, it's not fair, all of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, I'm so... So I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? Uh, 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 <laughs> that did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal a final blow. Why the wiretap? Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do, do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't it tippy tapping or irrelevant? She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you are tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. Well, this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you chopped her phone? Ah, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course, I can and will. Oh! Oh, okay! Um. <coughs> I'm a little worried about the age rating for the next episode, but that will have to wait for then. Um. My composure is flustered. I'm gonna just let the chill segment speak for itself. Hey there! I believe that's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, you should try subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell. That way, you'll know when the next episode comes up. If you want to help my videos do well in the algorithm, be sure to like and comment. And while you're commenting, you can always tell me what I did well and what I didn't do so well. That way, I can improve upon my videos. And if you want to help support me in other ways, I have a Discord and a Ko-fi link in the description below. As always, my name is Alistair Dragovic, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care.